Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on group theory. In this video, I'm going to talk about automorphism groups. So a couple videos back, I mentioned that isomorphisms between a group and itself are referred to as automorphisms. Now that we have talked about cyclic groups and uh, generators of cyclic and non-cyclic groups, uh, we can talk about these more thoroughly. So we have a cyclic group C, uh, where the order of C equals n, and you use the absolute value sign around a group to denote its order or size, um, then uh, if C is generated by an element A, and is also generated by an element B, then we can use the first isomorphism theorem uh, to, we have the integers, and then The first isomorphism, isomorphism, isomorphism theorem gives isomorphisms between z mod nz to c, which sends, we give one which sends one to b, and another which sends one to a. Then composing one with the inverse of the other, because isomorphisms are invertible, and their compositions also form more, more isomorphisms, gives an automorphism of c, which sends a to b. Uh, and this will work for any two uh, single elements which generate the cyclic group c. Uh, so, uh, because um, automorphisms, uh, automorphisms as homomorphisms need to respect need to respect the associativity of the group operation, um, or respect the group operation itself rather, uh, every power of A gets sent to the corresponding power of B in the, in the automorphism that sends A to B, and so just the fact that it sends A to B determines the entire automorphism on the cyclic group. It becomes useful at this point to note that the automorphisms of any group form a group themselves in that they are associative in composition and they're invertible and the composition of two automorphisms is another automorphism. For a group G, the group of automorphisms of G is written as ought G. So, for an example, let's look at z mod 9z. This is the set of cosets of z under addition, um, the, the, the set of cosets of the group of, of the subgroup of z, which is all the multiples of 9. So the cosets are going to look like the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, of course, is identified with 0, and the operation on this is addition modulo 9, which means that uh, any two numbers which sum to 9 or a number greater than 9 get subtracted down such that 9 is again identified with 0. Now, the generators of this group, as we talked about yesterday, are the, the generators of this group are all the elements less than 9, which are co-prime to 9. So these will be um, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. So any of these single numbers, will, any of these single elements of z mod 9z will generate the cyclic group z mod 9z. So using this diagram, we can make a, a, an, an automorphism that sends 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, 1 to 7, or 1 to 8. As it turns out, these six automorphisms of z mod 9z, one of which is the identity automorphism, and the identity automorphism is always the identity element of the automorphism group, those six, those six automorphisms form the automorphism group. Uh, we can call these um, phi, phi 1, phi 2, etc. Uh, in that phi, uh, phi n of 1 is defined to be n, and all the, all, all the, all, everything, it's, uh, everything else it sends is automatically decided by the properties of the group, of, of the group addition. So 
if you, if you want a automorphism that sends two to seven, what can we do? Um, This is going to be one of these phi i. We don't know what it is. We want that phi of 1 plus 1 equals 7. So phi has to send 1 to... Uh, so be, because automorphisms respect the group operation, this is phi of 1 plus phi of 1. Or phi, phi, of some, phi something of 1. Equals 7. And... Uh, we, we note here that 8 plus 8 in Z mod 9Z is equal to 16, but since 9 is identified with 0, 16 is congruent to 7. So phi 8 of 2 is going to be 8 plus 8, since 2 is 1 plus 1, is 7. So the automorphism that, the, so you can go through and see that any uh, pair of generators has one of these phi's that sends one to a specific generator, send the first generator to the second generator. So you'll note that each of these uh, phi sub one, phi sub two, they seem to be acting like multiplication in that since one is sent to the generator and every, everything else is sent to the generator added, added, added by itself added to itself as many times as the argument, because multiplication is repetition, it's actually just like multiplication of the argument element by the subscript of the phi. In this case, we, in this case, the Drupmachok. Here we have two being multiplied by eight. You get 16, but that's equal to seven in Z, in Z mod nine Z. Um, in fact, these will, the, the, the composition of these acts the way you think it would. If uh, we have, Phi sub, phi sub 2 of phi sub 4, that'll give you 5 sub 8, because 1 gets sent to, uh, because, be, let's write it out. If we compose phi sub 2 and phi sub 4, 1 gets sent to 4, and then 4, four gets sent to 8. So... Uh, be, 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 because the, th this composition of automorphism is again an automorphism, it has to respect the root operation, and thus every number will get every, every number in Z mod 9Z will, will get to, will get sent to eight times Z mod 9Z, which is the same as two times four times that element. Um, so every element which is co-prime to the n, which is the order of the cyclic group, is going to be uh, is going to have an invertible auto automorphism associated with it because multiplication by that uh, number k, call it, let's erase some of these. So this is going to be phi sub k, which is an automorphism on z mod n z to itself. And then we have that if we have this, then if we iterate phi k on one. Eventually, we're going to have to get, to, and eventually because Z mod NZ is finite, we're going to have to get to uh, some element. We're, we're eventually going to have two um, iterations of phi sub K on one be the same. So, Phi sub, k, uh, phi sub k uh, to the x is phi sub k to the y. And then this results that phi sub x minus y, assuming without loss of generating, phi, phi to the x minus y, 
uh, where, where it's, it's multiplication by k, 1 equals 1. And so in, in, in this group, in, in, in the multiplication that results from this, k to the x minus y will be equal to 1 modulo n. However, if it's not co-prime, if we look at z mod nz, for example, multiplication by 3 is not, is not invertible. 3 gets sent to 0 when you multiply by 3 because 9 is, nine is identified with 0, but 0 is also identified with 0, and so, is, so, so will 6 be sent there. So multiplication, multiplication by 3 is not invertible, and that's because 3 is not co-prime with 9. So the group under multiplication modulo n of elements less than n is called u of n for a group of units. And a unit is just something that has a multiplicative, mul multiplicative inverse under a multiplication-like op operation. So if we consider u of p, then everything less than p is going to be co-prime to it. And so u of p will be all the numbers less than p uh, that aren't zero, of course, which is going to be one all the way up to p minus one. And so u of p will have p minus one elements. So what we can do here is we notice that if a is less than or equal to p minus one, then if we look at a to the p minus 1, a either generates the entirety of u of p or a cyclic subgroup of u of p. Because a subgroup of a group has to have an order that divides the order of the group, uh, we, we can say that the order of a is going to be some k which divides p minus 1. This is going to be equal to, so this is going to be equal to a to the k to the sum q, uh, but this is going to be equal to 1 to the q equals 1. And this is all occurring modulo p. We can then make this look a bit nicer by multiplying by a once more. So we have a to the p equals a mod p. This also works for elements which are larger than a, because you can just subtract out multiples of p until you get down to a, and that subtraction doesn't affect anything modulo p because multiplying things which have uh, added uh, terms that are divisible by p, all those added terms will, everything that results from those added terms will cancel out under the modulo p operation. And this result is a pretty important uh, theorem known as Fermat's little theorem, which uh, more or less is the basis for uh, many parts of modern crypto cryptography. So far I've been talking about automorphism groups of cyclic groups, um, but if we look at the automorphism groups of a non-cyclic group, some interesting things start to happen. Cyclic groups have abelian automorphism groups, but not all abelian groups even need to have automor abelian automorphism groups. If we look at V4 again, which I mentioned in the last video. This is going to be the four element group uh, where a squared equals b squared equals a b squared equals the identity and a and b commute with each other. So the automor so this is generated by um, first of all a and b but also any two uh, of its non-identity elements. So an automorphism of V4 will send A and B to any two pair, any ordered pair of non-identity elements of V4. So the uh, six isomorphisms of V4 will be phi AB, A comma B, phi B comma A, phi A comma a B phi B comma A B and uh, phi of 
a b comma a and phi of a b comma b where the first element is what a gets sent to by phi and the second element is what b gets sent to by phi so if we call phi b comma a equals sigma and phi b comma a b equals rho um, let's see if these two elements commute with each other if we look at rho of sigma of x where x is an element of v4 this automorphism will send a first through sigma so a gets sent to b and then b gets sent to a b so A gets sent to A, B here, and B, B gets sent to A, and A gets sent to B. B gets sent to itself by the composition. If we look at the composition in the other order of sigma of rho of x, then where does A get sent? A gets sent through rho to B, and then B gets sent through uh, sigma to A. So A gets sent to A, and then B gets sent to AB. So these are not the same function. So rho and sigma don't commute, and thus uh, the automorphism group ought V4 is not an abelian group, even though V4 itself is abelian, which might not be intuitive. In fact, um, aught v4 is isomorphic to the smallest non-abelian group, uh, which has many names, but is effectively the group of rotations and reflections of, uh, in this case, this so marked up equilateral triangle. But in general, uh, but it's it's. Uh, generally just the group of rotations and reflections of an equilateral triangle. And so those are, those have been the fundamentals of automorphism groups, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video in our series on group theory. Click down there to view our playlist containing the rest of the videos in this series. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can not miss any more of a Center of Math videos. And click here to visit our website to check out more of our mathematics resources.